Well, the first thing that I always tell my patients when they're recovering from a hamstring injury is that they need to address their pelvic stability. Oftentimes the hamstring injury, which is the bundle of muscle group that is on the back of our thigh and helps us both to bend our knee and extend our hip backwards. So when we are running or walking or doing any sort of lower extremity ambulation, the hamstring is critical for being able to propel us forward and also create inertia so that we can continue to move forward instead of just doing it one time. It works in concert with other muscle groups that are around the area, such as the quadriceps muscles, but also above the area like gluteal muscles. And those muscles in particular are critical to helping stabilize the pelvic ring in addition to other musculature uh, around the pelvis. Oftentimes what we see is that there is an imbalance between the activation of the hamstring muscle group and the activation of the gluteals. And there is often what's called a timing delay, which means that the activation pattern between the gluteal muscles, the core musculature, and the hamstrings do not work in unison to each other. And that timing delay ultimately leads to an overload or a overabundance of load on top of the hamstring tissue. And ultimately the hamstring musculature fails over time as a result of that. So if you are a runner and you're increasing your training volume over time, if you don't correct this pattern and stabilize the musculature around the pelvis first, you cannot ensure what we call proximal stability above the area where the hamstring muscle has to operate. And as I mentioned before, the hamstring has to extend the knee and drive the hip back so that we can ambulate. However, if the core musculature and the gluteal muscles are not functioning properly to stabilize the pelvis, the hamstring also has to work to try to do that. And it can't do three things all at once. Try juggling a bunch of different things all at once and see how long you can do that. That's essentially what you're asking the hamstring to do. And ultimately what happens is the hamstring fails as a result of that. So the first thing I always do is I always, always, always work on people's pelvic stabilizers and their gluteal muscles to try to take some of the burden off of the hamstring, reestablish the neuromuscular timing mechanism that exists for co-activation so the pelvic muscles can become central force in stabilizing the pelvis and that we unburden the hamstring from working harder than it needs to. And in often cases, I've had tremendous success not even treating a hamstring injury once and just working on pelvic stabilization and the problem corrects itself. The brain reestablishes this new improved movement pattern and they never have a hamstring injury again. 